Hello um, everyone, you are welcome to uh, this uh, lecture. So we have already solved this one using three different approaches. Uh, we are going to solve the last uh, three problems. So the first question two, we have the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is greater than 9. I mean, we can, we can use the um, we can use the simple approach, all right, of the definition of the absolute value uh, inequalities, or we can use the quadratic approach where you square both sides. Okay, so let's use method one. Remember, we said that if the absolute value of x is greater than a, where a is positive, this means that x is greater than a, or x is less than negative a. So you will be solving something like this and something like this to get the solution to this. All right. So this means that two x plus three is greater than nine, or two x plus three is less than negative nine. Okay. So we need to take them separately. This and then that. From here, I have two x is greater than, I take 3 there, I have 9 minus 3, which is 6, divide 2 by 2, you get x is greater than 3. And then from here, I have 2x is less than, I have negative 9 minus 3, which is negative 12, right? So, you have x less than, divide 2 by 2, you get negative 6. Therefore, x is less than negative 6 or s is greater than 3. Okay, that will be the solution. You can um, you can also write it in a in a nice way, right? You can write in a different way. You can say that this means from negative infinity to negative 6 union from 3 to positive infinity. Okay? So try the same example with the second approach, where you square both sides, and then you can plot the quadratic, right? And look for the regions um, for which this is satisfied, for which you know the quadratic is positive. Okay, let's do uh, number three. Number three, we have. Three, we have the absolute value two x plus one over three is greater than five. Well, the only challenge here is rewrite this in a nicer way. If I have the absolute value of a over b, this is the same as the absolute value of a over the absolute value of b. Okay, so this is really the absolute value of two x plus 1 all over the absolute value of 3 but the absolute value of 3 is just 3 and this has to be greater than 5 okay now because 3 is positive you can multiply through by 3 and the sign will remain the same so if I multiply this side by 3 it cancels this out so I'm going to have absolute value of 2x plus 1 is greater than 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, so we have this inequality. So from here, you can choose any of the three methods, right, to solve this. I'm going to choose method 1 by definition again. So because it's greater than, this means that 2x plus 1 is greater than 15, or 2x plus 1 is less than negative. 15. Okay? From here, this means 2x is greater than 15 minus 1 is 14, which means divide through by 2, x is greater than 7. Or from here, 2x is less than negative 15 minus 1 is negative 16. This means that x is less than divide through by 2, negative 8. So, solution is that x is less than negative 8 or x is greater than 
seven. So which is that? Or oh, negative infinity to negative eight union seven to positive infinity. All right. Okay, good. Let's finish up with this last one. Again, you can try different method and, and, and check to see that you get um, the same the same solution. All right. You can try any of the other uh, methods, any of the other approaches. Okay, so here, last one, number four, we have the absolute value of x plus three over four. This is less than one over four. There isn't much to it. We can just apply the definition. It's less than, okay? So by definition, this means that x plus three over four lies in the interval negative 1 over 4 and 1 over 4. Okay? Remember, less than a means that, means that x lies between negative a and a. Okay, so you just have to solve for x. All you do is subtract 3 over 4 from each term. So you have negative 1 over 4 minus 3 over 4. I'll be left with x here because this will go to 0. They have 1 over 4, I subtract 3 over 4. Okay? That's all you have. This side will give us negative 4 over 4, right? This side will give us negative 2 over 4. So finally, we get x lying between negative 1, right? This cancels out. And then negative 1 over 2. So that is the solution x between negative 1 and negative 1 over 2. Okay, so that is the solution to 1, 2, and 3. Alright, um, I will end I will end this for now, alright, and then I will come your way uh, with some other topic. Alright.